We are back for Do This, Not That. We are going to break down right now the one thing that I would be doing if I was any marketer to make sure that as the world of email completely changes in the next few months that I'm ready. Why is the world of email going to be completely changing in the next few months? Well, we all already know that Apple in September is releasing their iOS 18, right? That's the version of their operating system on your phone, your iPad, wherever. And it's their latest version of that operating system. But within that operating system, they're updating all sorts of stuff. And one of the things that they're updating big time, as we know, is the mail app that little blue icon that we all click on to check our email. And to give you some rough numbers in terms of how often we use that mail icon to check our email, and then I'm gonna get into what exactly it is that we need to do. Over 46% of all business and consumer email is read via the Apple Mail app. So this applies to you. I don't care who you market to, I don't care what sector you're in, consumer, business, whatever, this applies to you. So what do we what do we know and then what do we have to do? We know that in September when this rolls out, um, Apple's going to be using their new AI uh, capabilities to automatically categorize the email that we are receiving, right? So as email comes into our uh, mailboxes, Apple's going to decide it should it go into one of four tabs the primary tab, the transactions tab, the updates tab, and the promotions tab. And then we, as users of the Apple Mail app, are going to click on these different tabs every day and check out what's in them and whatnot. And obviously, the stuff in our primary tab is going to be the stuff that we check most often. That's just the way it works. So what is the one kind of email that I think marketers are sleeping on right now that if you started today, you will be ready? And that will be, I believe, the number one most important type of email marketing and email in general for businesses to have um, as iOS 18 rolls out, and this is going to be forever. And that is a personal email newsletter. So we all have new email newsletters. You could be a business brand, a consumer brand. You have an email newsletter that you send out. The overwhelming majority of these newsletters that go out are from your brand right? The Acme at whatever. It's the Acme newsletter. Then there are some newsletters that come from a person. That's what we call a personal newsletter. Now, in general, personal newsletters have been crushing it, but I'm going to explain why you need to do this for Apple iOS in a second. Personal newsletters versus brand newsletters in the last six months, personal newsletters have a 32% higher average open rate. Okay, because why? In this world of AI where everything feels generic and it doesn't feel like anybody's actually doing this stuff, it's all being pumped out by these random AI tools, these personal newsletters allow you to feel connected to somebody. And that's why they're doing so well. But why does this matter as Apple's going to roll out their iOS and what should you be doing about it specifically? Emails that are going to go to the primary tab once Apple rolls this out in September are going to be those that are coming from an individual, right? And also those that are something that people are interacting with and that are not promotional in nature. And this lines up perfectly for your personal newsletters. Personal newsletters, as long as they are not pure play promotional vehicles and they're not coming from a generic brand email address, they will stay in that primary tab. This is the form of email marketing that is going to win the day. So what do you need to be doing about it to get ready? Two things. One is, from a brand perspective, someone in your organization needs to have a personal newsletter. You want to get a promotion. Let's say you're a marketing manager, okay? And you want to get a promotion in your company. Here's the number one thing I would do right now. I would say, you know what? our senior vice president of marketing, our CEO, our executive director, I want to organize and I want to launch a newsletter from them to our contact database. And it's going to come out weekly or it's going to come out monthly or whatever it's going to be. It's going to be from them. I'm going to help to write that and we're going to get out this content and it's not going to be promotional. It's going to be about uh, latest trends and tips and things going on in the industry or consumer trends. Um, and this newsletter is going to be part of the face of our brand. And why is that going to get your promotion? Because first of all, that senior person is going to be thrilled. Oh, wow, this is great. 
I'm going to be out there even more. And it's something that you can build on. But here's the secret sauce. When you launch that, you want it coming from, and even if behind the scenes, it is a generic address, you don't want it to look like a generic address. It could be Andy at acmecompany.com, right? And the newsletter is, you know, Andy's view of the world, and he's the CEO of whatever, the vice president of whatever. And this is where the newsletter is coming from. You start that now. You build up that subscriber base now. You get everybody in your database to be signing up for that now. Because that way, when Apple rolls out their iOS 18, your brand is going to have a vehicle to stay in that primary tab. And what you want to make sure that you do is that you are not using that just to sell stuff and promote stuff and register for this and download this. No, you start sending this thing out with absolutely no agenda, just sharing information, sharing useful stuff, have it written in a very personal tone. You could have, you could write in there, say, Hey, reply to this thing. I'm checking this thing out. You work on that reply mechanism because this will win the day as Apple rolls out their iOS because your brand newsletters are going to go to the promotions tab. You want them going to that primary tab. Now, the other piece of it is you. You have a need to have a personal newsletter. I don't care if you don't own a company. I don't care if you're not a vice president, a direct lover. I don't care if you just got your job. I don't care if you don't have a job. Every single person should have a personal newsletter. It's not about, oh, well, I would only have 20 people that subscribed. Great. That's 20 people that are going to look at whatever it is that you have to say. The reason you have to start today is that it takes time to build it up. And I promise you, the first newsletter you write will be garbage. I started a newsletter a few years ago called Scoop. Okay. It comes from me. I almost never promote stuff as a standalone email. I'm always just sharing tactics, tips, whatever. I started out with no subscribers. I went back and I read the first few versions of my newsletter. They were so bad. I was embarrassed, but you know what? The first time you do anything, it's going to be the worst. And then it gets better. And then you build up subscribers. And then when iOS hits and it's Q4, you now will have a newsletter that you are sending out that's staying in that primary tab, and this is a win. So this is the thing that I would be focusing on if I was any marketer out there right now. All right, before we get into Since You Didn't Ask, which is the ridiculous portion of this podcast, I want to let you know that this podcast is exclusively presented by Marigold. Marigold is my email sending platform. And I'm not even here to tell you how awesome they are, even though they are. I'm not telling you that you're using the wrong email sending platform because you are, and you should check out Marigold, and you could check them out at Meet Marigold. I'm here to give you a free piece of content that they just came out with. It is called the Complete Guide to Zero Party Data. Zero Party Data is everything. That is the data that people are intentionally giving to you and that you can then leverage and market all your different stuff. And people want to give you that data. And they have all these different tactics and trends and stats and stuff. They want to give you that data because according to the report, 83% of people will trade personal and preference data in return for early or exclusive products and services. I'm telling you, this piece of content is awesome. All you got to do is go to jschwedelson.com slash Marigold to download the complete guide to zero party data. It is free. jschwedelson.com slash Marigold. Check it out. All right. Let's get on to since you didn't ask. Okay. Since you didn't ask. Yeah. I mean, you know that I, I watch horrible TV. There's no doubt about that, but this was wild to me. So that I'm in the airport, I'm getting ready for a flight and some dude walks by me. Okay. And he's like maybe 15 feet away. And he just goes like this. He goes, yo, the bachelorette sucks. And he gives me a thumbs up. That was it. First of all, that was amazing. I was like, wow, this is a, like the fact that anybody would do that made me so happy and i just thought it was hilarious that yeah i'm known for watching the bachelor which is just so embarrassing but it's great but uh along those lines um speaking of the bachelorette which i know nobody cares okay it's the season started it's great but the golden bachelorette is going to be coming out in september this is just like the golden bachelor but this time is a woman she's an older woman that's gonna be looking for a dude very excited about this but Bad news for everybody in Bachelor Nation. Bachelor in Paradise is not coming out this year. No, they moved it to 2025. So no Bachelor in Paradise until next year, which sucks. But Love is Blind 7 is coming out in October. So we're going to be fine. Can you believe what you're listening to right now? Hopefully somewhere in your car, you're like, 
oh no, I'm embarrassed. I just listened to a lot of stuff about The Bachelor. So yeah, that's right, you did. And uh, I appreciate you being here. Listen, leave this thing a review. Please follow the show. I mean, why not? It's just gonna be more of this nonsense and we gotta all hang out together. And please, I don't want you not to have a spot. We are running out of spots of Guru Conference. GuruConference.com, 20,000 people. Sarah Jessica Parker speaking. I'll be there. Amy Porterfield will be there. The founder of Morning Brew will be there. It's going to be free. It's amazing. We only have certain spots left. GuruConference.com. Check it out. You're awesome. And go watch The Bachelorette. Bye.